Hello everybody and thank you for stopping by to watch the video. Today we're going to start off a little bit different. We're taking a look inside my Halloween Bits box. We are going to be making some spider infested forest. Something I would consider like impassable terrain on your wargaming table. Something that would block line of sight. Or you can just use it on your regular tabletop if you wanted to have a spider encounter. From my Bits box I'm looking for my webbing and a small baggie of 100 spiders both of which were on clearance after Halloween. And I'll go through that and rummage through it, see what I got. I haven't been in this box in a little bit. Uh, probably don't need that skull necklace, a skull bracelet, a little jar with heads in it. Eh, can't ever go wrong with a box of vampire teeth. Uh, spider rings, not little baby spiders. Oh, got it. Bag of little baby spiders. I'm going to be using two different types of bases today. This first one is just an MDF base. It was uh, a circle that I had cut out for something else. You can see the line on it where I don't remember what I was going to do with it, but I was going to do something with it. And I wound up not using it, so I just saved it. Um, so we'll go ahead and use that. It's about the size of a CD. It's a little bit bigger. And then the other base I'm going to use is going to be a CD. So I start off with giving this MDF base a coat of umber, umber brown. And might as well do the tree also. The tree has kind of a plasticky look to it, so we'll get the tree covered with burnt umber as well. For the tree, I try to do 100% coverage, but if I don't get every spot on it, it's fine. It'll peek through a little bit, but it'll just look like a different color. And um, that's fine, because trees aren't all the exact same color. And we'll go ahead with a second coat of burnt umber on the MDF base, just because MDF really drinks up that paint, so a second coat will cover that black line. Once everything dried, I realized I couldn't find the little part that the tree plugs into, and that's the part you glue to the base to keep the tree attached. So I just took out my dollar store clay and uh, got that weird pink color out and made a little base for it. And the key to getting the air dry clay to stick to the base is just put a little water down and then put the air dry clay on top of that and then mold it into the shape you need. Okay, so next step is I put down way too much glue. So this is a good lesson. Don't use as much glue as I just did. Use about half as much. It's going to warp the base a lot more and it's completely unnecessary. So after that glue is down, we'll go ahead and put our aggregate on the base. And that consists of... Uh, play sand and some stones from the dollar store, the little black stones and a little gray stones. You can get them for like a dollar each. And uh, they don't have them there all the time, so you got to keep your eye out. Whenever I go there and I see they have them, I always pick up a bag or two. I'll leave a link in the description below to the sand I bought. It's like a small five-pound bag of sand I bought from Amazon. You mix all that together and you have um, aggregate for a long, long time. Okay, so now this is the CD base, and you can see I did the same thing on that. I covered the little center hole with that little yellow piece of cardboard, and then these rocks are also from the dollar store. I think they're called Dragon Glass or something like that. Um, also a little baggie for a dollar, just like the other stuff. And then I uh, made another little base for the tree to plug into, but I got rid of that creepy pink color and used purple instead. So here I am just using some, uh, some glue, some E6000, to lock it down keep those rocks in place. Okay, so now both bases have been coated with burn umber and we're going to start on the rocks and I'm just using suede to um, coat the rocks. Suede is like a gray beige color. While the rocks are drying, I'm going to go ahead and take a territorial brown and just do a dry brush across both bases. Pick up a lot of that nice texture that's on them now. Next up, while all that's drying, we're going to go ahead and start on the trees. And we're going to use my hot glue method to put the um, clump foliage on the trees. One thing I noticed is that um, by the time I got to the second tree, my hot glue gun was starting to melt the little branches on it. So I just switched to another glue gun that had a um, high and low setting and just used the low setting and had no problem.
Okay, so there we have the first one done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the tree and any spots where we see some of the hot glue shining through or maybe just some spots that we missed, we're going to take some tacky glue. We're going to put the tacky glue on top of the uh, spot and then we're going to put some clump foliage on top of that. Now notice as I'm doing this, none of the foliage is falling off that we attach with the hot glue. It's all staying in place. Once all my trees are done and dried, I'm going to take them to my laundry room sink. There I'm going to mix up a 50-50 mix of matte Mod Podge and water. I'm going to put that in a spray bottle and then I'm going to spray that liberally over all the trees. When that dries, that's going to keep all that foliage in place and you're going to lose almost none of it. I'm using the spray bottle to save time. In my last video where I did the trees for your tabletop game, I just used a, a brush and just dabbed it on. But there's so many trees and so much foliage, it would take too long. So I just did like two coats of this over the trees and it worked quite well. After both bases dried, I gave the rocks two washes with my black wash. Then I waited for that to dry thoroughly. And now I'm going to go ahead and do a dry brush over that, just hitting the highlights with some vanilla. Now we're going to go ahead and start putting some flock and some other foliage on the base. So we'll start off with some PVA glue and then spread that around a bit. You don't have to cover the entire base, you can leave spots open. So I poured a little green flock into a cup and then just lightly sprinkle that over the base. It's a bright green so I don't want to cover it too much because your forest floor is generally not going to be bright green. Following the bright green flock, we're going to take a blended turf flock, which is from Woodland Scenics, and we're going to do the same thing and just sprinkle that over and around the green flock. Okay, now comes my favorite part. We're going to take a mixture of parsley flakes and oregano leaves, and we're going to mix that together and then we're going to sprinkle that on the ground and that's going to be the majority of our ground cover and it's going to look like leaves and other debris that's on the um, forest floor. The parsley flakes and oregano leaves I bought from Walmart and strangely enough they come in large shaker containers and it's the same size as, as those uh, like 32 ounce containers you get from Woodland Scenics. And they were pretty inexpensive and because you're mixing them together you're going to get a large volume of, of flock and ground cover out of it and it's definitely worth picking up if you have the chance. So for the first base I did the rocks. For the second base I thought I'd do like some fallen branches and, and other like uh, limbs and stuff like that. Debris that's you know fallen from the tree. So with that, I mean, you can go to Woodland Scenics and buy a little baggie of, you know, wood trimmings and wood bits, or you can just go into your backyard and find some dead branches and just break them up and use those. Um, if you use the ones from your backyard, you're going to have to sterilize them. Most people put them in their oven for a bit and just make sure they bake off anything that could be on there that could be dangerous. Obviously, if you use this method and you, and you put this into your oven, you need to watch it closely because you don't want to start a fire. So here we've just taken that little baggie of spiders and gotten a whole handful out and just glued them all over the base. Initially I used PVA glue but I found that it didn't stick very well with the rubber that the spiders were made out of. So I switched to my uh, hot glue gun, just switched it to low temperature and that worked fine. Remember when you're placing the spiders, scatter them all about and the more the merrier. I wanted to include a couple of victims that had been caught and cocooned. So I broke out my favorite bag of uh, cheap skeletons and cut them apart into just a torso and a head and then just gave those a quick paint job. Nothing crazy because they're going to be wrapped up in webs. You're really not going to see them that well. For the cocoon victims, it was just a black prime, a vanilla dry brush, and then some shield brown for the leather bits.
once he was painted, I just took some of the webbing and wrapped it up real tight around him and made it into a nice little cocoon. Don't forget, put some spiders in those trees. They're all over the place. Okay, time for some spider eggs now. I had a little bag of uh, styrofoam beads, which you can get at the dollar store. And these happen to be like a light green color, but I wanted them to be more like a white or pearl color. So what I did was I just uh, painted them with some vanilla, and then I had some uh, metallic like pearl color. And then once that dried, I just went over with that, and uh, they came out nice and shiny. The spiders are probably the weak point of this build because they're very cheap looking. So one of the things I did to try to fix that is I gave them all a coat of matte Mod Podge because they're like a very shiny black plastic, and I figured this would help dull them out a little bit and make them look a little bit more realistic. Placing the spider eggs was just a matter of dipping them in a little PVA glue and then placing them with my tweezers in little bunches all around the base. This last step is optional, but if you want to complete the look, you can take some of the spider webbing and stretch it out really, really thin. Even when you think you've stretched that enough, stretch it out some more and then just place that over the trees and drape it down onto the base. And here are some shots of the final product. They look great, but one thing I realized after I was done with the build is I missed out on the modularity aspect of it. I could easily have not glued the spiders down and just left them alone and just sprinkled them on the base when I needed them. And as for the spiders in the trees, I could just stick a pin through the spider, snip the end of the pin off, just leave a little bit out so that I could just poke it into the tree itself. This is what I mean. See how the bottom of the pin is snipped off, but there's still enough of it left that you could just push it right into the foliage on the tree and it'll stay in place. That being said, I'm still very happy with how they came out. I wound up doing one with webs on the tree, one without webs on the tree, and then I had a third one that has no spiders, but just shows what, you know, impassable terrain might look like. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I really need you to do that for me. It's going to help me out a lot. Also, next time we're going to be painting up some centaurs to go with our two sets of forest terrain we've done. I'll catch you later, guys. Bye-bye.